In this section, we're going to talk about creating hand lettered wooden signs. And this is my favorite section of all of them. And I'm going to show you step by step how to make this beautiful hand lettered sign. Of course, yours doesn't have to say the busy girl's guide to hand lettering, but please feel free. So in this section, um, you're going to require much more specialized tools and materials that are going to cost a little more than some of the other crafts that we're talking about. But once you learn how to make the hand lettered signs and if you have these tools already, it's actually a fairly cheap way to create decor. The sign behind me, we used scrapped wood that we had left over from another project. So it was, we really didn't spend any money on it. And it's this huge project that's the focal point for the room and it was free. So that's what I love about this technique. Once you learn the basics, you can incorporate in all sorts of different sizes and shapes in wooden decor. So the tools you're gonna need, um, as far as the big tools, you're gonna need a table saw and a miter saw. And let me just say, please learn your tools. Know how to use them, use the proper safety precautions, use the proper safety equipment. So you'll need three quarters inch sanded plywood, you'll need one by two pine trim, you'll need a table saw, miter saw, chalky finish paint, sandpaper, stain, and painter's markers that's made by Elmer's and you can find them at Walmart or on Amazon. I think oddly enough they're also sold on Oriental Trading Company. Um, but those are the basic materials you're going to need for this project. And now I'm going to walk you through how to actually build the sign from start to finish and it really is easier than it looks and you're going to love the finished product. First I cut my wooden canvas using the table saw. Be sure to account for blade thickness and stand to the side so if the wood catches it, it does not hurt you. Set the blade height a little bit above the ply thickness and put the finished side up when you cut. Next we made the front frame using 1 by 2 pine. Cut two pieces exactly the height of the canvas, which should be about 13 and a half inches. Then the other two pieces to line up exactly. That should be about 12 inches. In all, when you put the pieces together, it should make a frame. Next, we're gonna quickly paint your wood. I chose white, but you could really paint it any color or you could stain it. Don't forget also to stain or paint the trim pieces that will go around the canvas frame. If staining, be sure to allow time for the stain to soak in, then wipe it dry with a paper towel. Then allow another hour or so to dry. Before painting your design on your canvas, you'll wanna lightly sand with 220 sandpaper and wipe clear of any debris. I used transfer paper or carbon paper to transfer the design I had sketched onto a scrap piece of paper. This way you don't have to worry about erasing any mistakes that you make. When using transfer paper, be sure to press firmly, but don't rub your hand too much against the paper or it could leave smudges on your canvas. After you've transferred your design, grab your Elmer's painter's markers and begin to trace your design. Just like with the basic hand lettering technique, you want your down strokes to be thicker. I like to go through and first do one coat all even thickness and then go back to thicken up my down strokes. If you find that your paint lines are thin or looking kind of smudgy, take a scrap piece of paper and continue to press the tip into the paper until paint runs out of the tip. If this is your first time using paint pens, you may want to practice on a scrap piece of wood until you feel confident in your technique. To affix the stain trim, we used a finish nailer with one and one quarter inch straight finish nails. If you don't have a finish nailer, you could use wood glue. Underneath, 
the wood canvas, I placed two paint stirrers to create a border so it wasn't, so the trim is not flush with the canvas. Hold the finish nailer firm to the frame, keeping your fingers clear. I used a scrap piece of wood to create a backstop so that the frame would not slide as I was pressing the finish nailer against it. Once you've nailed the trim in place, you can seal the wood and frame with a spray clear matte top coat or a brush on polycrylic. Yay! Now you're done and you can display your hand lettered sign proudly.